Hey there, good to see you. Today in this video, I'm going to demonstrate for you how to create more accurate selections when using the Select Sky Mask in Adobe Lightroom Classic. This tool is also available in Adobe Lightroom and Camera Raw as well. And as useful as it as it may be, I mean, for me, it is especially in landscape photography because the sky is oftentimes, you know, part of an image. Uh, sometimes it doesn't get things quite right. Sometimes the tool gets a little bit confused. You know, what is sky and what's not? But I have found from experimenting with it and using it with my own photography that there are some useful, you know, tricks and some ways of using it that uh, that make the tool better and make the selections that you are creating more accurate, which in turn gives you better results. So let's jump into Lightroom here and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So this is a landscape image of mine and I would like to make some edits to the sky. I just want to say like change the exposure, maybe add some color, some dehaze, whatever it may be. I want to make some adjustments up here without affecting anything else in the image. And this used to be a much more technical, much more involved thing to do. It used to be much more complicated, but now in the latest versions of Lightroom, Lightroom Classic and Camera Raw, it is much, much easier. Now all we have to do is come up here to the masking tool and then click on select sky. And boom, Lightroom automatically creates a mask for us. It automatically selects the sky. That's everything you see here in red. So any adjustments we now make to this mask will only be applied to the sky. Or at least that's how it's supposed to work. When things get a little hazy and you know there's a little bit of bleed over, things can get a little bit weird. As we'll see over here on the left side of the image, if we come over here and take a look at these boulders, some of that red mask is creeping into the uh, into the boulders here. You can see some of that red in the rocks here. And the reason that's happening is because if we turn off the mask and take a look here, you can see that the highlights on these boulders here share the same color as the sky because these highlights are picking up the uh, the blue light from the stratosphere above. So Lightroom thinks that these boulders are connected, that they're part of the sky. So it is including them in the mask. Now, of course, we could come over here to the mask and then click on subtract. We could go to brush, remove the mask this way, like remove it from the areas where we don't want it. But that is just, well, as you can see by the white glow that, <laughs> that's appearing here, that's a little sloppy. It just doesn't work uh, all that well. So what we can do is uh, there's a different way to do this that is much, much more precise and honestly kind of feels like a little bit of a hack. I'm kind of surprised that it works, but it does. Instead of subtracting a brush, we're going to come back over here to subtract and we're going to select sky. So yes, we're going to subtract the sky from the sky. And there we go. This is really interesting. I mean, take a look at this. Now our mask only includes the bleed over. It only includes those areas where the mask was encroaching into areas where it shouldn't be. It's almost like the select algorithm is somehow different from the subtract one. It's like the AI models are different. I'm just I'm just making things up now, but it's just there is something different about it. Now, obviously, we don't want this to be our selection. We still want to select the sky. I don't have any interest in these areas here. So to do that, we then come back over here to the mask and we then invert that uh, subtracted sky layer that we just created. Come over here in that menu, click on invert. And now check that out. Now we have a very clean mask. It's very cleanly separated from the foreground. We no longer have that weird red bleed over because that red bleed over in the mask has been automatically removed. Weird, right? I'm not entirely sure why it works. Uh, again, it feels like there's some back end reason for it working the way that it does, but there's something about uh, subtracting the sky from the sky and then inverting that subtracted selection that just seems to create a better, more accurate mask. Okay, so now that we have a nice selection for our sky, we can now invert this mask as well in order to select everything but the sky. Like let's say, for example, we wanna make some edits just to the foreground here. Well, we can come over here, go to duplicate, and we could change the name of this to foreground, and then we can invert this mask. And now we have a nice clean mask for our foreground. Well, at least it's sort of clean. This, <laughs> these Sierras back here are a little, you know, they're kind of in a weird place. Like they're kind of related to the sky, 
but they're not. And they're kind of related to the foreground, but they're not really related to the foreground either. They're just kind of there in the in the background. But I don't want to be affecting them with any changes. Like my intention here is not to draw the viewer's eye back here. I want it here in the foreground. So I don't really want to be making edits here. So a nice way to do that is, again, to use the subtract tool. So let's go back to subtract. And we could use the brush like before, but I don't think that works quite as well. Instead, we're going to subtract objects. Now, the objects tool is interesting, or the objects mask is interesting because it has two modes here. There's a brush tool and a marquee tool. The marquee tool you can use to basically just like draw a box over whatever the object is, and then uh, Lightroom's AI will figure out what that object is and automatically create a mask for it. But the brush tool, it works a little bit better with things that aren't quite as well defined. There we go. It has removed the Sierras from our foreground mask. But as you can see, there's a little bit of weirdness here. So we can go back to subtract, go to objects, draw that across there. That part has been removed. But it kind of missed these areas here. So uh, we can go to add now instead of subtract. We can go to add, select object. And the brush size is a little bit big, so I'm going to bring this down right about there. And so now we have a foreground mask that no longer has the mountains in the background. Oh, actually, there's one more over here. I just saw this. So let's, uh, let's do this. So now, finally, we have a very precise mask for our foreground. Now, any adjustments that I make here are only affecting those most immediate areas, the areas that are most important. But there's one more thing I want to show you here. Another thing that we can do with this mask that's also really helpful. OK, so now let's say that there is one specific area within this region here that we would like to make an edit to. And we don't want it to affect anything else. We want to make it inside of the foreground, inside of this mask here. Well, what we can do Let's come back over here to the masking panel and we're going to duplicate our foreground mask and let's call this i don't know uh tall hill something like or tall boulder that's that's more exact okay so now we have that and we are now going to click on the three little dots over here the little ellipsis over here at the far right and then go to intersect mask with and choose radial gradient now you can choose anything you want here. It doesn't have to be a radial, but you'll see what happens. So when I draw this radial gradient on, check out what it does. It is only within that mask. It's only within that foreground mask, that very clean, very precise foreground mask that we just created. So I can just, you know, park this like right over here, something like that. Like if I want to, you know, draw the the, uh, the viewer's eye more to here. Maybe maybe it lacks a little uh, clarity, a little bit of light. And this is just, you know, quickly for demonstration purposes. The whites a little bit, maybe give it a little extra warmth as well, just to draw some additional attention there. And let's just go ahead and add a little bit of clarity too. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, this is a technique that I utilize quite often. Uh, I have found it to be quite helpful for me. If this was uh, helpful and it was worth your time, do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up down below. And if you'd like to check out another video about Lightroom, I have one uh, over here. Uh, this one is about uh, clarity. This is a recent one that I produced explaining what clarity is, how it works, and when you'd want to add it to an image and when you might want to remove it from an image. Pretty cool tool. Uh, hopefully that's a helpful video to you as well. Thanks, everyone. See you in the next one.